Hey everybody, it's Kristen McCary from Studio 913 and today I'm joined by Jackie Columna with Columna Agency. Welcome Jackie. Hi Kristen, thanks for having me. So Jackie, tell us a little bit about what you do. At Columna Agency, we're a full service accounting firm. So we provide anything from tax preparations, bookkeeping services, um, tax strategies, as well as um, tax preparation services for uh, small businesses and individuals. That's awesome. And just so everybody knows, um, Jackie is a friend of mine. Um, she's an amazing professional in the tax industry. Um, she's who I go to first for all these questions that we have as a small business owner myself. I want to know what's going on um, with the CARES Act, with tax deadlines, because I'm a procrastinator. So how much time do I have left? Um, all those good things. So Jackie has been a wealth of information for me. And I just thought that I would reach out to Jackie since she is here local in the Central Florida area. Um, would be great to introduce you all to a local business and um, let her explain some of these questions that a lot of people have. Um, so thanks again for joining me, Jackie. Um, so talk to me a little bit about the tax deadlines, because again, I'm a procrastinator. So what does this mean for me? Do I have more time? Do I have to do anything? Or is it just like an automatic extension? What's going on? So with the CARES Act, um, part of the regulations that were changed were for this year, the tax filing deadlines from April 15th they were all pushed back to July um, 15. That includes the filing deadline as well as the um, payment deadline. So nobody will be assessed a late filing fee or penalty or interest while they can file before July 15. That's awesome, that's great to know. And so do I have to do anything for that or is it just automatic, like I just don't have to worry well, about it? Those are gonna be automatic. Um, the only thing is for taxpayers who normally take longer than usual, the IRS does tell us that extensions for the automatic six months extensions do have to be filed by April 15th. So I believe that's in what, two days uh, time. So those still have to be filed um, by, in time to give you the automatic six months extension to August, uh, excuse me, October 15th. But this particular extension with the CARES Act is automatic. You have to do nothing. And as a matter of fact, for the people who actually have scheduled their payments by April 15th, to be automatically withdraw, withdrawn, the IRS actually does recommend and says you can take advantage of deactivating that payment and scheduling for a later date for July 15th. They will we'll actually give you up until that time, even if you can't pay, uh, as a grace period for you to get that payment in and take advantage of some relief. That's awesome. That's great because that would help some cash flow issues if you're not, you know. Absolutely. If you need Absolutely. some time. That's that awesome. Goes for, that goes for individual taxpayers and businesses as well. That's really great to know. Good. <laughs> Taking note of that one. Um, so tell me a little bit about um, retirement account changes. Have there been any changes in that world? Yes, for the retirement accounts, they are, have lacked some of the rules. So they're actually not assessing early penalty withdrawals for this year, 2020. They are also pushing the max that you can borrow against your 401k from 50,000 to 100,000 for this year. Um, and they're also um, not more well, relaxing the minimum requirement distribution that if you do not need to take it, obviously you want to keep it for the older folks in your account. They're also allowing you to keep that in there. So they've kind of relaxed some of the retirement um, guidelines uh, there so that you can take advantage of that and adjust as you need to. That's great news because, you know, I know a lot of people, um, you know, obviously a lot of people have had a little bit of a hit in the stock market, but, you know, to be able to access that if you need that cash, um, you know, that's great, especially again, as a small business owner, um, you know, finding that cash flow is, is huge. If I can add to um, the installment payments and such that were due by April 15th, uh, the IRS has also suspended the actual installment payments. So if for those folks that actually have an installment agreement and it's an automatic withdrawal by the IRS, they actually suspended that temporarily until after July 15th. So don't panic if you do not see that come out is because they've actually you know, automatically suspended that until July 15th Well, they will start repooling your payments again. So no need to take any actions if you do want to post that payment on time still uh, because you happen to have the cash flow, then you would have to schedule a payment um, through their website individually. But the automatic payment will re-kick back on after July 15th. That's great news. That's really great news for people that do have existing installment plans. Um, 
you know, thankfully I don't right now, but <laughs> I've been there. So that would have been nice. <laughs> uh, and so then can you tell me a little bit about the, um, the current stimulus package? Well, you know, what does it entail? What is it doing? Um, when can we expect uh, some relief payments coming in? That sort of thing. Absolutely. That's obviously the hottest topic right now. People need some of that relief and that aid that's coming to us. Um, that already started. So initially they just slated it for three weeks as of last week, but they actually started it as early as this Sunday. Um, uh, how are they funding it? They have not published any particular guideline, but I can tell you that what I've noticed are a lot of the film, uh, military families got it first. And obviously they're going to try to come up with some structure They've already started releasing it uh, predominantly to those that have already filed as well for 2019. And if, if for those who may not know the stimulus um, impact payment, as they re re refer to it, is uh, $1,200 for a single taxpayer, $2,400 for a couple, and those who have qualifying children will get an extra $500. The child, however, must be age 16 and under. If the child turns 17 or has turned 17 as of uh, 2019 or 2020, they will not be eligible for the child credit for that. Um, those payments will be direct, direct deposited mainly to the account that the IRS has on file using the most recent data going back to 2018. So if you filed a 2019 return and they have your bank account information, they will use that to fund the, stim the stimulus payment. Uh, if they don't have a 2019 account, then they'll use your 2018 account information to fund the stimulus payment. Now, Kristen, for those people who do not normally file a return, who live in Social Security, who are minimum wage or lower income, I shouldn't say minimum wage, but lower income um, uh, earners that do, are not required to file a return, those are called non-file. And for those, the IRS has created a special link called non-filers um, update my information here. And we'll try to include some of those links uh, within the video or they are definitely in my site, uh, my Facebook page or website uh, for non-filers to update their bank account information so that the IRS can make those payments. Another two tools that they're creating are going to be for those who have already filed but either they moved or changed bank accounts or they have not filed uh, a 2019 return. And that link is going to be called filers um, get your payment. So when they do launch that link, which is not yet live as of this morning, um, they, you will be able to go in there and update again your bank account and address so that you can actually get that payment funded if you have not had a chance to update your or file your 2019 return. The third tool they're going to create or update rather or enhance is the where's my fund, where's my refund tool, where you're going to be able to track your stimulus payment to see where this has already been issued or when it's slated to be issued um, and if it's going to be deposited or if it's going to be mailed to you. So it'll have those pieces of details in there um, so that you can track that payment and know when it's coming to you as well. That's great info because I know there's lots of people that end up paying their taxes every year. Um, and then, so if you still fall within those income ranges, you know, it'd be nice to be able to, you know, add some account information so you can get that direct deposit instead of waiting on a paper check. There are income ranges. That's right. Uh, so if you are a single taxpayer and make under $75,000, you will get the $1,200. If you are a couple and make up to $150,000, that's when you will uh, be eligible under 150,000, that's when you'll be eligible for the $2,400. So yes, if you make over that, there is a phase out um, table that they'll use uh, at a rate of every $100 that you make, and then your refund will start obviously diminishing, but you can always check those out with the IRS as well. That's awesome, that's great information to know. And now is this like, um so I know we keep talking about 2018 and 2019 taxes, um, but is this, I've heard that it might be like actually a credit on your 2020 taxes. So it might be actually impacted on your 2020 income. Is that accurate or? So, yes. Um, the way the law is written is that it is a 2020 credit. Um, and anytime as a professional that we hear the IRS say it's a credit, it means that you have to either pay it back or be eligible when you file or reconcile your 2020 tax. Uh, but it is for the 2020 year uh, tax year period. So all the guidelines that would apply for 2020 
um, as far as eligibility. That's what they're using. And the work credit leads us to believe that it's something that you would have to pay back. There's a lot of, you know, um, speculation and media posts and, and obviously a lot of credible sources that say that you will not have to pay this credit back. But when I hear and read the work credit within any, obviously, law, then it usually means it's an advance for some sort of reimbursement. So we're hoping it's the latter. And you know, we will not know until obviously more information is published as this goes on because this has literally been written, you know, as we go. Right, absolutely. And that's just it, you know, you really don't know the the long-term effects of it, but hopefully it'll, you know, buy you some time now and then you can address that um, you know, later if if it comes to that. So Jackie, I've heard about um, you know, these employer credits um for paid sick leave and that sort of thing. Can you kind of expand on that for some of our larger businesses in the area? Yes, uh Kristen, the part of the CARES Act included uh some benefits as well for medium to larger businesses that can offer paid sick leave, leave or required to offer paid sick leave and family leave for those taking care of uh, individuals or themselves who have been affected by the coronavirus. And with this credit, um, the employers who have more than 50 employees or under 500 employees will be required to pay sick leave and family leave if uh, individuals are affected but they can turn around and file for a credit that is kind of offset by the quarterly deposits they have to make for the employer's taxes, and they can apply for those credits directly with the IRS. If you have under 50 employees, you can be exempt. Um, if you have employees that are obviously affected, but you would have to file a requirement with the IRS to be exempt from that from that regulation. Awesome, Jackie. Thank you so much. This has been a wealth of information. I mean, I even learned some new things that I didn't know already um, from you, but I, I really enjoyed following your post. You've been, you know, anytime that anything comes out, I swear I see it from your Facebook page before I see it from news outlets. So I'm, I'm super appreciative of that because you can keep me abreast of all the new um, developments and everything that comes out. Um, super looking forward to a lot of those tools that the IRS is getting ready to roll out too. Um, I think it's going to be really helpful for, you know, a lot of people. Um, and I just want to thank you so much for, for joining me today and, and, and indulging me in doing this. I just thought it'd be a great, um, you're, again, such a wealth of information for me personally that I wanted to share this with, um, you know, everybody that I know. And so if, if somebody is looking for um, tax advice or tax preparation, you know, maybe, maybe now's the time to actually do your taxes if you're sitting at home not doing anything. Um, don't be a procrastinator like me. <laughs> um, but uh, how can people reach you? Well, they can certainly contact us with our phone number, which is 407-507-2686. Um, we also have our website, and we're very active on Facebook. Like you mentioned, we try to make sure once the announcements are made by the IRS or the Department of the Treasury, try to post that information and decimate that so that everybody is informed. Uh, we're also in LinkedIn. I also have a profile on LinkedIn, so I can be reached on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, directly to the website, uh, very available. I try to answer the, my messages right away and uh, just looking to share and keep you guys informed. Awesome, thank you. And actually, I happened to notice um, the other day you posted that you're gonna be doing a WebEx with some other industry professionals. I think there was somebody from Bank and uh, Edward Jones that can kind of you know expand on the things that you've talked about today. Um, you wanna tell us a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, so this Friday, um, I believe the event is 11 o'clock, we are going to have a seminar to talk about our particular areas, myself included with Mr. Gabe uh, from Edward Jones and Ivelisse from Center State Bank. So she will go over the piece of the SBA and the PPP programs that small businesses can take advantage of. Gabe is going to go over more of that retirement, you know, um, world and and uh, investment, if you will. And then I would obviously go over a little bit more on the taxes and recap some of the information we've discussed as well. But anything that it's new, uh, Friday morning, I will share if there's any new publishings with, uh, with, uh, within the event. Awesome. That's great. Well, thank you so much again, Jackie. I really do appreciate it. Um, and if anybody out there does need an accountant, definitely give Jackie a call. She's absolutely wonderful. You won't be disappointed. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks, Kristen.